which I'll talk about in a second. It looks like taking their temperature and making sure they're healthy and getting them in. So that might take time. We also want students to be able to order lunch during first block. And so we're doing some things in first block that's gonna take some time away. We also wanna be able to release students in a staggered way at the end of the day. We don't wanna just have 3.30 bell to ring and everybody goes out and mixes together. We're gonna to always stagger our release for the time being. Meaning we'll start with maybe the science wing and release them out to buses and to go home. And then we'll release first floor, second floor, third floor, and we'll rotate them um, each day. And so we built in time at the end of the day and beginning of the day. In our schedule, lunch looks like about an hour long. Uh, we're gonna give about a half hour for students to eat. Uh, because we have a closed campus and because we can't move students around just openly, students will be asked to stay in their second block class during that lunch hour. And we will tie seminar, for those of you familiar with seminar, an opportunity for a teacher and student to engage in looking at grades and, and working on work and things like that for seminar. We're combining the seminar with lunch. Lunches will be delivered to the room. Students will have to order their lunch in the morning in first block, which is another reason we built in time. Um, the Wednesday schedule looks something like students will be in class for about 55 minutes in the morning. Uh, I'm telling teachers, you don't have to direct instruct for 55 minutes, um, but you're meeting with students. You could put students in breakout rooms and have them discourse and talk and, and share things like that. And they're aware of that, but they're, they're, they're available. I mean, the afternoon on that Wednesday, teachers will be available for office hours. One of the pieces of feedback I got from my teachers from last semester, was how important the office hours were. And they might, many of my teachers told me they worked harder at uh, office hours and longer at those than they did at the teaching piece, um, just because, uh, and, but they, just because it was timely, um, but they love that touch with students in terms of connecting with them. And when it was in a remote environment, which ideally, which is not ideal environment, but, um, those office hours became important to my teachers and they worked hard in those. So we've built that in. We're also gonna use that for um, staff meetings in that afternoon. So teachers won't be available for that whole time, but they will be available during that time. So that's our schedule. Um, I'm gonna keep going. Nobody's interrupting me. My administrators are watching. If there's a question that comes up or something, they'll, they'll, they'll interrupt me. And, um, Related to our schedule is the building's not gonna be open until 7.30. We're not even sure we have to be 7.30, it might be 7.45. Unless the student prearranges something with a teacher and that teacher meets that student, escorts that student to that teacher's classroom, we just can't have people wandering the building coming in. Uh, in the past, we have students that are get dropped off early and they come in the building and they go into the, uh, into the cafeteria, eat breakfast, hang out at tables. Um, in this environment right now, we can't have that. We can't, we're not gonna have tables set up in our commons area, which is a difficult thing to, you know, when you think about it, we're not gonna have tables set up in our cafeteria or gym lobby. We just can't have students congregating, sitting down and, and hanging out together. So we will open the building starting somewhere around 7.30. It might be bumped to 7.45. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the protocols about what that looks like and for students coming into the building, um, but we won't open our doors until 7.30, maybe 7.45, just to um, basically protect everybody in the building and protect um, the places where viruses, I, bet, I guess, can land and stay and stick. I wanna talk a little bit about remotes. A lot of families are saying, I haven't heard anything about my, my kids elected to do remote learning. And we have uh, about 100 and I think 50 kids, 50, 60 kids who have elected to do remote learning. Uh, we will, you will be receiving an email um, from us, a letter that outlines kind of the uh, basics of remote learning, what it's going to look like, and the challenges of remote learning. Um, each student will receive an email with instructions about how we're going to start and, and engage in remote learning. Um, what I want parents to know and students is that, A, it's not going to look like last year. If people are thinking, hey, the remote learning, if it's like last year where I get to meet with teachers and I'll be in groups and I'll, I'll talk to the teachers on office hours, it's not gonna look like that. It's gonna look like we have a program called Edgenuity that we've used um, for many years now. I have two very good teachers who are very versed in Edgenuity, um, but we'll have other teachers um, in all subject areas. Um, it'll be a program where students are basically getting some core classes and a few electives in it, um, self-paced, 
meeting students will work at their own pace and they will check in with teachers. Um, the teachers overseeing that will have to check in with them because students will get to a certain spot in that where they can't go any further without a teacher releasing a test and having the student to take a test and pass it to go on to the next section. So it'll be um, self-paced that way and students can, if they're really good, they can get through several classes in the same time. However, um, it's going to require, it takes some time to get through uh, 160, 180 lessons, um, take some time to do that. And uh, it'll probably require about the same amount of time sitting on a computer working um, remotely as it does if that student were in a class. Uh, it's just, just the way Edgenuity is built. It's a challenging program and um, they test kids all the way through and you got to pass tests to move on to the next section. So that's what it's going to look like. Um, there's limited choices available to the students in that in that way. We will get the cores in there. You definitely have all the cores, and um, those are the important things really for graduation. Certainly get elective credit, but um, just those are some of the keys about remote learning. Um, if there's questions, I'll be glad to answer more about that and any other questions as we get through. Um, Beginning of the day, um, students are going to be able to come in through, uh, I wrote the word five, and then I wrote the number four, four doors. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Um, students will be allowed to come in through four doors, okay? When they come in, there's going to be a kiosk at those doors, and they're going to stand in front of it, and in about a second and a half, it takes their temperature. And um, we'll have a two personnel, we'll have a security guard there to monitor it. We'll have probably an administrator there to monitor it too. Um, what happens with that kiosk is sometimes students who have walked to school will come in and they're, they're hot and they'll stand in front of this and it'll show that they're over 100 degrees. So we will um, take their temperature using the kiosk. Um, the people at those doors will also have handheld thermometers. If the student tests over 100 degrees on that kiosk, we'll have to actually have just ask them to step aside for a minute, give them a minute to cool down while they're inside, air conditioned morning, and we'll take the temperature again. Um, I've come in several couple mornings and I've been hot and I stand and take it again, I'm fine after I've been inside. So um, we're basically taking the temperature of students to make sure that they're not running a fever. If after they've stepped in front of the kiosk and we've used a handheld and they're still high, like over 100, 101, we'll probably take that student to the uh, nurse's office and the nurse will have a set of protocols there to determine what, you know, if the student is showing any symptoms of COVID. Um, again, this is all we're obviously protecting everybody um, um, using protocols. Those entry points, we have a west entry here on the, and we'll have two kiosks at the west entry. That's the traditional one. We have two, um, if you think of the student parking lots, the west entry is where we get the lion's share of our students coming in. Um, obviously the ones who park in the parking lot. Um, we will put a kiosk over by the Health Science Academy. Again, that's an entry point from the parking lots where students park. Um, we'll also put one at our science wing doors. Um, a lot of students enter through the building, into the building from the bus stop. They'll get off the bus um, and they come in that door. And it, in addition, in the main castle, this is the castle first floor. Um, parents, if you visit our school, this is where we would come in, we'll have a kiosk there. So again, students coming in from the bus, students come in from walking. They generally uh, walk in 15th Street, up 15th Street and come in that door. Those are the only doors open, four doors. Everything else will be locked. Um, we expect students to come in through those doors, take their temperature and then go to class. Um, there's gonna be some mixing and mingling, but we're trying to, we'll be ushering kids and getting them to class on time, which is one reason we're not gonna open up the building early. All the other doors are locked. However, um, there will be um, some students who get in, get it by, because if they walk by a door with glass, people see them, they'll knock on the door, people will open to them. We're gonna try to limit that. We're gonna try to guard against that because we do wanna just take temperatures and make sure students are not running a fever. Um, but four entry points every day um, until uh, someone tells us otherwise. Um, lunch, as I mentioned, we have a closed campus. Students will stay in rooms. They'll basically stay in their second block class with their second block teacher. There'll be another teacher who comes in there, another staff member who comes in there during that time and relieves that teacher so they can have lunch too. Um, this is important. As students who leave campus at any time during the day will not be allowed back in the building. So some students will insist, I'm leaving, I'm not staying for lunch, I'm going. If they go for lunch, we will not allow them back in the building simply because 
they're going to go out into the community. We don't know who they're going to mingle with, who they're going to interact with. We have to protect that. Now, there is an exception to this. If you're a parent who says, what if I get my kid out for an appointment? We will allow for that to come back, that student to come back in, assuming that the parent has been with that kid and taking them specifically to a doctor's office where that student's been kept safe and not exposed to things. We'd ask though, if a parent, if you decide, let's go to lunch after the doctor appointment um, and expose it to other people who are at lunch, we'll ask you not to bring your student back. Um, yeah, I have something else to think there. In that lunch slot, I mentioned this, there'll be a 30 minute seminar time where students are just able to work on stuff and they'll have a teacher available who might be able to answer their questions around classes. In the past, during a seminar time, we've moved students to see teachers they need to see. And uh, we can't do that. We can't mix the cohorts. We can't send students everywhere, wherever. So they will be staying in a room. When you start thinking about that, it, it, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a difficult thing to adjust to. Uh, students, high school students are social animals and they like to interact. And some of that's gonna be taken away and limited. Um, they're just gonna have to hope they meet someone in their second block and they can hang out and eat lunch with that person. But again, it's about safety. Um, one other thing that will be new, uh, we can't allow people into the building uh, from the outside. Uh, oftentimes students order lunch and have it delivered in our office. We're not gonna allow for that. Um, as a parent, if you say, oh, my kid forgot his lunch, I gotta bring him his lunch, we're not gonna take the lunch. We can't allow you, you'll come in that east door, it'll be the only door that's unlocked and we'll say, you can't come in the building. Go, well, I got this lunch and say, we, we can't take the lunch because we don't wanna handle it. And so you have to drop off books, gym clothes, um, lunches, uh, we can't accept it. So we're gonna ask that that kid comes prepared with everything they need in the morning, but we can't allow outside people um, into the building just to drop things off, which also means as a parent, if you come, hey, I need to pick up my kid for an appointment, we're gonna ask, and I have this in here, you're gonna ask that you call ahead or send us an email. We'll send for that kid and have them there. You obviously need to do it a little ahead of time. If you show up in a parking lot and call us, we have to send for them. It'll take a little longer to get the student out of class, um, but we will, and we'll have that student meet you in a designated parking lot, whatever you decide, wherever you decide to meet your student for that. Um, Health protocols, I wanna go through health protocols just so um, you're aware of what we're gonna expect for that and maybe why. Um, we have a parent handbook and we have a student handbook and in there we have, hey, here's all the COVID protocols and there's a place for you to sign on it. We're not gonna ask you to sign this necessarily, but when you sign off basically in registration and said, hey, I, I've received or I know where the handbook is, uh, I'm aware of what's in the handbook, these things are covered in the handbook. We're gonna ask students to wear a mask. We're gonna ask staff to wear a mask. We're gonna ask everybody to wear a mask all the time. They're mandatory, wherever they are in the building. Um, you might look and say, well, you're not wearing a mask. I'm, yes, I'm not. I'm talking and I'm in, a, I'm in an office by myself. Teachers who are in their room by themselves won't have to wear or cover their mouth and nose with a mask. However, when we're around people, when we're in rooms, we're gonna ask them to cover themselves. And one rationale for that is um, we are protecting an exponential number of people. When you look at all the contact people have and all the backgrounds and, and, and family situations and everything else people bring to school and then go back out, we are protecting an exponential amount of people and it doubles and triples and multiplies in a huge way in terms of contact. I have a lot of teachers who are, have angst because they live with elderly uh, their parents who are susceptible to this virus and others who are um, immunocompromised and are susceptible and many students' families are. And so we're working to uh, protect all that. And so we will maintain a mask rule. We will expect every student to wear a mask. Um, I do not foresee Greeley Central's hallways looking like the Georgia hallways. If you're watching the news of high schools in Georgia where not a single student's wearing a mask. That's not gonna happen. Um, and we'll be pretty tight about that. And we'll be you know, on students and we'll, we'll invite students to put their masks on, but we're not gonna invite a student to continue to put their mask on. If they refuse to wear a mask, that student has to go home. Uh, we'll call the parent, let you know about it. We might ask you to come in so we can talk and see if we can agree to that. If we can't, we might have to move a student to remote learning or something, but we just have to protect everybody in this situation. So we will require masks. We'll ask students to wash hands. We'll have signs all over, say, hey, please wash your hands. Um, we've had workers here all summer putting in new boilers for us. So we have these brand spanking new boilers. They took out these huge iron boilers that have been there since 1950 and um, 
put in new boilers that are efficient. So we all have hot water. We'll have a lot of warm water. So we'll encourage everybody to wash their hands. That's just part of the whole thing. We'll keep ask you to keep hands across away from the face. I've probably touched my face multiple times already, but um, uh, we will consistently disinfect areas. Um, every classroom will be sprayed down by a teacher in between classes. When a student group of leaves, we have a 10 minute passing period. Um, and student teachers will spray down a, their desks with a disinfectant that kills the virus in three minutes. Um, janitors will come in after school is out and released and we'll spray down every room. They'll go through and spray down every room and let that sit and then go back in and vacuum for those rooms and the such. Um, we'll spray down anything that we, you know, we spray down our workroom in between uh, classes. And so we will be working to do that. Students are encouraged to go home and change their clothes. Um, just put those in, in the wash and get new clothes out. So those are just part of protocols, whether they do that or not. And I just want to point out too, it's six feet and a mask. You know, some think as well, it's six feet or a mask. And, and so some says, well, I'm not near anybody. It's six feet and a mask right now, especially indoors, especially by the governor's uh, decree um, that's running right now that we wear masks indoor, regardless of the footage between people. Um, distancing thing, we, we're going to ask people where they can to stay six feet apart. Now our halls will be a little crowded. We're going to try to keep students moving. We're it's certainly required to wear a mask, but we're going to try to keep them moving. We will mostly be six feet apart in classrooms. If you come and look in our rooms right now, we've taken move desks out or move desks aside and we've left about 15 or 20 desks. There'll only be about 15 students on average in a room and we can pretty much get those about six feet apart. Four feet is the ideal, you know, one, we don't want to go less than four feet, but um, in most rooms, if you were to look, we got about six feet different distance. Um, again, class, class, some kind of covering over the face. We're not gonna allow kids to congregate. That's why we won't have tables set up. We're gonna keep kids moving. It's gonna be difficult again, because they're gonna expect it like it's, old, like, like it's old, uh, always been and, and it's not. We can't congregate, and can't stay in one place. Class sizes, we're limiting, um, no touching. We're going to limit that. We still have some kids who hang out in the stairwells and, and, and touch, and so we're not going to allow for that. Uh, we're going to limit in-person interactions. We'll probably try to limit in-person, like try and pull kids out to meet with them, but there will be some things where we have to do that. Again, we're going to clean, clean, clean. We're going to hold that, you know, two's company, two's okay, three's kind of getting crowd. Um, so... Again, six feet mask, some people, oh, it's six feet or, nope, it's six feet and a mask. I wanna emphasize that and we'll be uh, emphasizing that with our students. Hey, you gotta get a mask on, gotta get a mask on. And we'll provide um, a mask for um, all our students. And um, who was it that um, we had, um, oh, I wanna say dream team, but it's not dream team made masks for every one of our students. It was awesome. And I want to give them a shout out. Um, it was, um, I don't have any information. I think it was, Alicia, do you know who it was? I want to say Dream Team, but I think it's uh, our other group that helps us out. It's the Success Foundation, Gary. Yes, it is. Success Foundation. Thank you, Dave. It's the Success Foundation. I should know that. Julie Hill and crew, um, they made masks for every one of our students. So, um, cloth masks. So, hats off to them. Kudos to them. Appreciate that. Um, want you to know, too, that we have a lot of supplies. Our teachers are worried and, and anxious, and we've told them, hey, what you need, we have. We have a lot of masks, you know, we will give masks to students. We're not going to continually give a mask to the same student every single day where hey, you got to keep a mask, but we have ample amount of cleaning supplies. We have plexiglass things to protect teachers and uh, students. Uh, we have new air filters going into all our air conditioning systems. Um, they're supposed to be better air filters. We have a purify, air purifying uh, systems that are being delivered that will be in each room. Um, I'm not just sharing that, hey, we are taking, um, we have a lot of supplies that will work to protect. There, I knew I had it in, I knew I wrote it somewhere, Success Foundation made masks, there it is. Um, kudos to them. We're buying microphones and webcams for our, our teachers so that they can at the very least record their lessons so lessons are available for the students who are absent. 
And I would go back to, we wanna limit the amount of um, absences for students, obviously, because when a student misses a day, they're really gonna miss two days worth of instruction. If they miss an in-person in day. And so that coupled with, as you're making appointments um, for your kids to, students to do um, orthodontist, dentist, those things, we'd ask that you potentially try to do it on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if they're in an A group and vice versa, do it on the days that they're not actually in-person learning because our teachers will be uh, recording lessons and if they're home and you miss part of that lesson because you are going to the dentist when you're home, you can get on Schoology and probably see that lesson and catch up again. Um, the in-person thing is very important. So we'd ask that you not potentially, if you can, avoid appointments that would take away taking them out of class. That would help limit the amount of people in school coming, kids going in hallways, things like that. Um, I, we told the staff this, but if a student and staff must isolate, they got to isolate if they test positive for COVID. They got to isolate themselves if they're starting to feel any of these things, their cough, sore throat. We would ask you as parents to pay attention to those things. If they uh, have fever, obviously, if they're getting achy, they're like they're complaining about, I'm really sore for some reason, or they're really tired. You know, they're going to understand they're going to be really tired because they got to get back. It's been five months since they've had to get up and go to school and be in class all day, and they're going to get home at four o'clock. They'll be tired, so don't confuse that necessarily out of the gate with being fatigued, but if they're consistently waking up fatigued and they're just dragging, they talk about tightness of their chest and or they're, hey, they're getting chills or um, I can't taste anything. And if they say something like, I can't taste this, that, that's a sign that they have symptoms. It doesn't mean they have COVID, just there's some, those are signs. We'd ask that both students and parents pay attention to those. If that's the case and you want to go get tested and keep the kid out, your kid out, then uh, we just ask, hey, call the school and let us know and we'll, we'll help out. We'll try to get the material. Um, the student will have access to online material all the time. Again, that's why we're getting microphones and cameras so that that stuff is available. So um, returning to school after, when can the kid, well, if we have symptoms or if they test, but when can we return? Well, no fever for at least 24 hours without use of medication. All the other respiratory symptoms, coughing, all that stuff has improved and at least 10 days have passed since any symptoms first appeared. I think 10 days, is it, yeah, that's a, that's a while, yes. Again, it's why we're gonna have the ability for every student to have Chromebooks and every student to still have access, even if they come down with any of these symptoms or certainly come down, God forbid, with COVID itself. Um, mentioned Chromebooks, every student at Central will be allowed to uh, and be able to connect through using a Chromebook. And we're going to check out Chromebooks here, and I'll give you the dates. Um, but that allow them to do school. They'll be expected to do school remotely, um, not just because hey, we're in person two days a week. They'll be expected to be online five days a week, potentially, and doing some work. And so every student will need something to do that. And so we will allow every student to check out a Chromebook if need be. You don't have to have a Chromebook if you have something at home that they're using and it worked well last spring. You're welcome to keep using that. Um, Again, we have some things in our handbooks that we need you to read over and it makes you when you read over those and agree to having read it, you're agreeing to the fact that, hey, we'll take care of this Chromebook. We'll replace it if it gets lost or broken. Um, our checkout for these Chromebooks will be next Tuesday and Wednesday. We, at first, we're gonna wait till every student got into school and see the whites of their eyes and bring them down to the library and check out a Chromebook to them. Uh, but then we thought, well, that's a lot of movement. That's a lot of mixing and that's a lot of bringing kids out and back and all that stuff. And so we decided, hey, let's just check out the Chromebooks before school gets started. Um, the other thing that helps with is if we cut down a semester from 18 weeks to eight weeks, every day becomes important. Every day is important for a teacher. And so if we were to pull a kid out and line them up in the library and be checking out Chromebooks, that would take time away from that teacher. So we want the teachers out of the gate to be have the ability to teach and not have to pull kids out. So we are doing that in the Northwest parking lot, basically where we've been doing everything else um, for this stuff. Uh, my staff, my secretaries have spent a lot of time out in that parking lot. We'll spend some more time out there. So here's the, the schedule. Um, next Tuesday, we're gonna start at eight in the morning. And if you're a senior, we're gonna check out a Chromebook to you from eight to 10. We're gonna try to be very efficient. We're gonna have cars come in and have four lines and we're gonna scan their ID and we're gonna scan the computer and we're gonna say, here you go, take care. Um, juniors, we're gonna have them come in that day from 10 to noon. Then the next day we switch it to the afternoon 
Uh, I'll tell you why in a moment, but we'll have sophomores come from two to four. We'll have freshmen come to four to six. Our thinking is that freshmen have to be driven. We're trying to set a time um, where if they have to be driven and parents have to work, they can have time to get off work and bring their kid to school and uh, get a Chromebook. Now, what I did throw in here, two, two things. One, if you're a remote learner at our school, when do I get, you can come into any one of those slots. Um, you can come anytime to get the book. You, hopefully, uh, you come during that time. And the reason we break it down to seniors and juniors is so that we don't have a line that goes all the way down the heath of cars waiting to get in. Um, that doesn't, though, prevent you from, like, I can't get there during my slot of time. Um, you can come at one of the other times. It's not a big deal. Um, we're just trying to keep the line of cars and traffic and the greedy police on our side because we, we cause traffic jams um, sometimes when we line them all the way up down 15th Street. So um, one other thing there, um, students need their ID when they bring it. When we registered everybody, you got a student ID. We want to be as efficient as possible, touch as few things as possible. So we're going to scan the ID. We're going to scan the computer, hand the computer off, gloves on, and you're good to go. So every student who needs a Chromebook, that'll be available. We're going to do that next week. Transportation, we've got a lot of calls about what's what's up with transportation and what will, will my kid be able to come to, to uh, on a bus. Um, first of all, I want to say the district encourages you if you can, kid can get to school other than taking the bus, that would be a good thing. Because think about it as we're trying to cohort kids in school, but we put those kids together on buses um, that kind of defeat that purpose. If we can limit the amount of kids on buses, that's a good thing. It's a safe thing. Um, but how, if, like, there's no way I can get to school without a bus. Um, you can call um, transportation. I give you the number there. It's 6,348-6,000 and register. There's been an opportunity for you to register before. Many student families have registered, but if you haven't registered, you can call them directly. They're going to need to know that, hey, my kid needs to be on a bus. And they will uh, give you the information. I don't believe the routes have changed and the pickup points will change for our transportation. Um, but you need to know that students will ride two to a seat on the bus. Um, the seat will be assigned to your student. They will sit in the same seat every day on the bus. Um, and students will be required to wear masks the whole time on the bus. So uh, they'll keep things safe. They'll keep things clean. They'll spray down those buses in between um, dropping off and picking up groups of students. And I believe the routes will remain the same mostly as last year. And so if your kid rode the bus, and they'll be going to the same place. If you need to check your student out of school, um, we cannot allow parents or any others really for that matter in our school um, coming in and out, in and out, in and out. So we'll ask that you call ahead. Um, you can call or email. I said mail, that would be, that would be wrong. That would take too long. That should be email. Um, that, Celeste Bauer is my attendance secretary and that her number, if you wanna take a snapshot of that, write that down, 348-5014 or cbauer at greedyschools.org. And if you get an email in and, a, and or in the beginning of the day or early on, or you leave a voicemail with her early on or during the day, we will have your kid, pull your kid out of class and have them there hopefully in time waiting for you um, in the parking lot. And you can designate where that is. Um, and like I said before, please work to make appointments on days that they'll be home, um, that would help just eliminate the traffic and pulling kids out. We we'll have limited leaderships. We generally rely on student leaderships to go with passes around the building and we'll have to limit that. Um, we'll use security, but security is busy doing a lot of other protocol things. And so managing all that is is will be challenging, but we will uh, we'll do it and with your help. Last thing I want to just talk about briefly is uh, I go over this with uh, my staff. Last year with staff, we did some work around values. What are our central values? What are our staff values? What values do we hold? And we hold them and we had a page of probably 200 plus words that reflect values. We had them rate, choose five and rank them and turn those in. And we took those. And the number one thing you might guess from any group thing uh, like that would be, hey, we value honesty and integrity. So we want to act with honesty and integrity in what we do in trying to get students to achieve in our grading practices. We want to be honest and act with integrity, equity, things like that. We want to examine all those things and make sure we're fair. Uh, but that's important to a staff. Um, 
One thing we've known for, I think, at Central with the staff and with students is we want to prioritize people. We want to care about each other. We, we hold that as a, as a high value and we, we want to put students first. And uh, we have a saying for every adult, for every student, every day. Uh, but that includes adults. You know, we want, you know, we say every adult is here to, for the students, yes, but um, every adult is here for each other too. But we want to prioritize people. Um, collaboration is a big part of what we do. Um, since my tenure, this is my third year as a principal, I've pressed this idea. We want teachers in professional learning communities. We want teachers working together. We want teachers learning from each other because I have a lot of excellent teachers. And when I can bring those excellent teachers together with other teachers and allow them to share ideas and allow iron to sharpen iron, cool stuff happens. Um, I, so I want them working together. I want them taking ownership for what it is they come away with, and what it is they teach and how they teach it teaching, I, I tell my teachers, I want them teaching the same thing in an English 10 class. I want all teach students in an English 10 class, no matter who they have as a teacher, to be learning and being tested on the same things. That's important to us, but it makes us better. Along with that, I expect teachers, one of the things was uh, humility, and that came out in our values. And uh, I want my teachers to be humble enough to, to recognize there's more to learn, there's more to grow in. And you can, rec you can understand where I have teachers have been here for a long time and tradition sometimes gets in the way of being here a long time. This is the way we do it at Central. And I got a lot of new teachers coming in and say, well, yeah, but what about? And it's like, no, that's not the way we do things at Central. Well, that can be a bad thing sometimes. Tradition can be a good thing because we rely on and say, hey, this is who we are, but sometimes it might get in the way of progress. So I ask my teachers to be hungry, to learn more stuff and to be humble enough to say, you know what, there is more for me to learn. So we hold that with my teachers and we'll challenge, obviously we'll challenge students to be hungry to learn. Um, we like to talk about building in intentional margin into our life. And we do that by having fun together. My teachers bowl together. We have a bowling league. We get together at a beginning of the year party. Although not this year, we hope we can potentially get together at a Christmas party. Um, but I also carry that over. Our teachers like to have fun with students. And they like to do things. And we do a lot of fun things. and. And part of the, you have to understand part of my morning process, and I believe it's going to be part of the student's morning process, certainly part of my uh, teacher's morning process, is all the things we can't do. Um, things like the first day assembly, where seniors come in and they rock the, rock the joint, and they, um, the senior sunrise, and uh, right now, homecoming parade. These are all things that mark the fun in our year and mark the things that, you know, these are the reasons I, I love school so much. And those things are all off and we have to figure out how we're going to have fun um, and how we're going to build that in, in, a, in a, and stay safe. That's a challenge. A challenge for my staff. It's a challenge for students. And um, I tell my seniors, hey, if we can get to a senior sunrise in October and November when things are safe, we'll do a senior sunrise. We're going to put the first day assembly off to the, I don't know, 90th day. It might be in February when we have it, but we're going to try to have it. We're try to hold that. We might have a homecoming in, I don't know, March or April. We're going to try to hold to those traditions, get back to them if things get back to normal. But um, we like to build that margin in by having fun. I tell my teachers, hey, we're going to make have great effort. We're going to expect great effort on our athletic fields. We're going to great, expect great effort in our classrooms. I'm going to expect great effort from uh, my students and, um, and from my teachers. And so that's part of our value system. We're going to give good effort. Um, I talk about relentless wow. Let's figure out how to wow our students. You know, there's a lot of things out there that are wowing students for a while. You know, there's video games that they like for a while, and there's new apps they like for a while, and uh, um, there's all kinds of things that wow them. And so our challenge is how do we cut into some of that and wow them um, with with literacy, wow them with reading, wow them with curriculum, wow them with something that hey, this is important and this will this will last. This is a good thing. So we talk about that. Um, in their collaboration, we always talk about high leverage practices. What are the best practices? I tell them, like I've mentioned before, we're going to do fewer things, we're going to do them better. What does better mean? Well, it's coming up with strategies that are high leverage, that we know these strategies work. This will, these kids will get this learning if we use this strategy. Um, and some of those strategies exist. There's a lot of strategies out there, and some of them we're going to innovate. Some of those we're going to create, and we're going to do that in, in departments, and we're going to do that in professional learning communities. Um, last thing, I want them to be positive. You know, it's, uh, there's a saying that pessimists get what they expect. So do optimists. And we're gonna be, um, we're gonna be optimistic. 
and uh, we're going to make the best of it. Um, I keep saying, you know, people say, oh, how's it going? I say, well, it is what it is, but we're going to do better. Um, and so that's kind of my tagline. It is what it is. All this stuff that we have to mourn and give up for now, um, it is what it is, but we're going to do better with it. Whatever we're faced with, we're going to do better and we're going to be positive and, and go forward. So want to share those things with you. That's kind of what we're about. And I think most recently in terms of our values and that's what we uphold. That's what I expect from teachers. Teachers in turn expect it from students. So, so I've talked a lot, almost for 55 minutes, 50 minutes. Um, and you might be um, saying, whoo hoo, cheering. It's, uh, that's all I have. Um, I probably missed something. Therefore, if you have questions, um, you can contact me. If I don't answer a question tonight or a question comes up for you or a concern, you can contact me. Uh, my direct line to my office is 5009, my email address. You can contact my administration. You can call the school and say, I need to talk to um, Mrs. Lackey. If you're going to say, hey, what are schedules? You know, I've, I'm going to punt and give it to Mrs. Lackey. <laughs> but um, if you want to do that, you can talk to anyone else. We're open to doing that. But um, this is where if you have questions and you want to unmute and ask a question, you just say, hey, I've been carrying this thing around for a while and I, I got to get this, you know, get this out and get an answer. I have it and I will do my best to juggle and answer. Great. I haven't been paying attention to chats. Um, I probably should. Carrie, there's lots of questions about Ames classes in the chat. Um, give me a second while I try to pull that down. Oh, there's 63 chats. Here is, um, here's the thing with Ames. We are struggling to trigger, figure out a schedule. What Ames did um, is uh, they told their teachers, hey, you can tell, you can decide when you want to teach classes. And so like fire science decided, hey, we're going to teach classes all day Monday. Well, we can't get take, pull a kid out all day Monday to do fire science. So we are struggling to try to match our schedules and try to get kids into AIM schedules. I'm not sure it's going to happen this semester or not. Um, it's just, it's been difficult and challenging. Um, Um, I'm just going to start. I'm going to start seeing questions here, and so if I'm pausing, it's because I'm reading a question. Someone asked if they bring, if they have a personal computer at home, should they plan to bring it at school? Um, we will check out most of our Chromebooks. We're going to expect a student to be carrying some kind of device, and teachers will rely on those devices in class. They will open up. They will do things together in class, and so yes, they probably need to have a computer or a Chromebook with them if the computer doesn't move from home. Um, I think some of these questions have been answered. Um, I have three students. Can I pick up all Chromebooks at once? Yes. We just asked that we be able to scan three different cards and give it to three different, sign it out to three different students. So we got to, we just have to track all that carefully. So I'll still answer that. Are there questions guys? So I don't keep it. If they've been answered that I need to talk about, or if you can, you can, you're welcome to unmute. Everybody will see you though. You'll probably go to the front of the line. Everybody will see you. Hey, Carrie, there was one question um, in regards to getting a negative COVID test. Are students allowed to return sooner than the 10 days if, the, if they are fever free and symptoms improve? Yes, my understanding is they will be allowed to return if they have a negative test. Someone asked if they can bring their lunch from home, certainly. Town Carrie, home. there, there yes, was something ahead. about a student health checker um, that was sent out through communications from the district today. Do you need students to fill out that student health checker every day? Um, that's a good question. I don't think I have not heard that we're asking students to do that. It's a, the health checker is a series of questions. You have a cough, you have fever, do you have those things? My, my understanding was we were not going to ask um, students to do those. Staff is doing those, but um, 
I probably have to follow up on that because I don't want to give you wrong information, but I have not been told that students will have to do that health checker every day. If that's the case, they have to. That's another reason why we built 10 minutes into the policy. Yeah, that was just sent out on that um, uh, communication and flyer that was sent out today to families. Um, I know staff does it, but I this one was specifically a student checker. And on that flyer, it said that it gave the web um, or the link and I clicked on it and it was specifically designed for students. So I didn't know. Yeah, interesting. Um, I have to follow up. I have not heard that and I, didn't, I haven't seen that communication. Um, there won't be a lot of, someone's asked about open blocks and kids leaving. There won't be a lot of open blocks with maybe the exception of seniors. You know, if we have some seniors who don't need a whole lot of credits. And um, if we give them an open block, we'll give them a first or fourth open block because what we want is either they come late to school or they leave early and they go and they go to work and things like that. But there won't be, not certainly no, there'll be no open blocks for freshmen or sophomores, probably for most juniors. Oh, see someone answered that. Are there other questions that are, that are on there that as I'm going through, so I don't reiterate if the question's been answered or do any of you have questions? Guys are all quiet. If you don't have questions and you don't want to stay on, you're welcome to click off and then we will have this, you know, posted. So if you had questions that I might have covered, and you want to go back, that'll be available. If you want to stay on and ask a question, I will stay on with you. Carrie, one uh, one quick question that just came up. Uh, uh -huh. Is there a pl is there a plan on reintegrating remote learners at some point? Yeah, the one thing we're asking is, um, and we've said this, I've heard Dirge say in the town hall, if, it's, if you're choosing remote, we're asking you to stay on that remote path for the semester. So doing both quarters, because reintegrating that person into a cohort becomes um, complex. Uh, at semester, definitely, if they decide they want to come back, um, if they decide now that, hey, you know, I really don't want to do remote, I want to stay, that's, we can, we can work with that. But once we start the semester and start into classes, it'll be really difficult to integrate that person at, and so we're asking that that family to keep that commitment for the semester. Someone's asked about Chromebooks again. You don't have to come twice with two different students at two different grade levels. Just come one time, let us know. We'll give you both Chromebooks. Plans for second semester? Say again? Plans for second semester? Um, we hope that COVID goes away here somewhere where everything goes flat and we're down to a 0% infection rate or really, really, really low. And we can go back to having everybody at school at once and having seven blocks a day. Um, that's our promise, our hope, and we're not a promise, but uh, if not, we will probably do this continue in a block system, in a four block system. Um, we, one of the reasons I'd mentioned the beginning that, you know, in June, we had a schedule ready to go. It was a seven block day. And then they moved to, hey, we need to go to a rotating block, four block day. And so we started thinking about that. Then they came back and said, no, we still want two students to have choices. And we still want to have them again in school. We, so we went back to our seven block schedule. And then they came back and said, no, we got to go. We really have to go to a hybrid model. And that looks like four block. Um, so they might in, release some of the restrictions of that. And while we still have some restrictions, we might be able to go to a seven block day. You know, students, more students in the building at once. Um, all that is, is remains to be seen. Um, just hope and pray that the whole thing dies off. The cold, maybe I thought the heat would kill it off in the summertime, but apparently not. Maybe the cold will, who knows. Uh, hopefully the whole thing goes away, but don't know. 
Other questions? Come on, someone has to have a question. Everybody um, wants to get off and go to dinner. Huh. This might be obvious question with the, the cohorting, but are there no clubs? Uh, is there any update on theater? Or would that be another portion? Good question. Um, clubs, we, one of the things we're gonna use our Wednesday afternoon for is, and maybe the lunchtime during Wednesday and once we break out of school classes is that we will have club meetings virtually. They will be allowed to do that. And we're gonna set them throughout that day, that afternoon. So students who are involved in more than one club um, are able to join and do different clubs virtually. Um, but we're going to use that Wednesday afternoon for the club piece. Sean, I don't know. Have we gotten an update for theater yet? We are waiting to hear whether they'll allow all our students on stage to practice, you know, or do things, you know, separately and then be on stage to do a performance. Yeah, Carrie, we're currently putting together a plan that would hopefully resume um, kind of theater and the arts inside the school. So that's a work in progress, but hope to have answers soon. One thing I appreciate about my staff right now is they are coming up with ideas and they are turning the wheel and thinking, what about and asking, you know, when you, you go through that curve of grief, one of the things that as you're starting down into the like depression and anger and frustration is bargaining. Can't we do this? What about this? And I appreciate that because they're being creative. And so one of the ideas my theater group has that people have is what if we uh, get those big screens that the um, city uses for um, summertime movies and we put those out in the parking lot and we have a drive up screen up there and we project the play out into the parking lot which is kind of a cool idea i thought um so we're looking at because it, it doesn't it's kind of tough to if you okay we're going to put on a play but only four people can be sitting in the theater at one time. um doesn't help that so we might put them out and, and somehow project it and stuff so we're, we're just we're thinking of ideas of how we can pull this off and how we can um, bless the community and bless the kids who put all the work in uh, we're working on that Guys are all quiet. Hey, Carrie, there's a question that just came in. Um, if my child starts in school in person and is not comfortable, are we able to switch to remote learning? I'm going to say yes, comma, Alicia, question mark. <laughs> So it is easier for our kids to shift towards online at home. We very much would appreciate if they start in one program or the other, um, but we understand. Um, so it's really just about communication with the parents and the student. You just gotta communicate with whoever your grade level administrator is and we collectively can make the best for you. Um, someone asked a question about the parent committee. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't thought about that. I do have a parent committee that meets. Um, I will set up um, meetings. So we generally meet three or four times a year and um, that'll be have to be a remote meeting most likely. Um, but I'll set those meetings up. I'll send an email out to the entire um, community asking if anybody's involved or if anybody's interested in being involved. Um, last year, the parent committee before everything uh, went went remote, parent committee stepped up and fed our staff uh, dinner and the staff loved it, that was awesome. And they had all kinds of ideas. And so I'm anxious to get back with that, but um, I'll set up those meetings and they'll be remote and I'll put out uh, things that anybody's interested in is welcome to join and be on my parent committee. Um, someone's asking about a student on IEP, how will he get help? We will still continue to have co-teachers in classrooms. We'll still have co-teachers who uh, work with the students, um, both remotely and in person. They'll be in the classrooms on the day your student is in class. They will be part of the you know, program and be available when they're outside of class. They'll be part of the Wednesday remote. Um, they'll, be, they'll be part with office hours and stuff. We would like to, 
based on the needs of our CLD students, especially our um, limited English speakers, non-English speakers, and our newcomers, we want to try to get them in more days and keep them safe, keep them isolated from the other cohorts, but also get them in where they're in person. And so we have some students who have that need to have more touches in person. And so we're working on building schedules that will allow for that to happen, both for certainly our IFL kids, certainly for our newcomer kids, and for some of our IEP kids. Um, we're looking at how we can get them in four days a week in person. Maybe five, maybe the Wednesday two, have them in school when everybody else is remote in the morning. We're looking at a lot of those different things. Um, someone's asking, my son's a freshman, doesn't have a schedule yet. Um, actually, no, no student has their schedule yet. We are hoping to get those schedules done by tomorrow. Um, we are, we, what happens is we plug them in, we put students in classes, and then we have to double check it. And so we're kind of in the proofing stage and double checking it before we launch it. Because once we launch it, it goes out to everybody and everybody can see their schedule and all that stuff. So we want to make sure it's as close to uh, correct as possible. But we are we are working to get our schedules out. So don't worry. I know there's been calls and there's angst there and students, why can't, why can't I see my account? Why can't I? We, we're not trying to hide it. We're not trying to hold it to the last second. We are just trying to make sure it's going to be accurate. So we will get the schedules out. They will show up in IC, um, but it's taking some time. Jessica, you're welcome for us meeting the needs of students. I'm, I'm just going to ask you how we do it. So I'll have a meeting with you here coming up shortly to say, help me, help me figure out how to do it. If there's no other questions, you guys, you're welcome to, I appreciate you guys again being here and being part of this. Um, if you have questions, you're welcome to contact the school. We'll be very good. We'll try to be very good about getting back to you. And uh, um, Harper Ward, are you on this thing? No, I see your name. No, Carrie, it's me. It's Molly. I just used Harper. Oh. <laughs> sign in. Okay. I was going to say, I, I think Harper, Harper's not coming back for <laughs> super senior <laughs> year. Thanks for everything. This looks pretty incredible. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being part of it. Absolutely. Carrie, I stopped your recording and the video is going to be in your Zoom account. Okay. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you all for doing this too. Have a great night. You're welcome. If there's no other questions, um, thank you for your gratitude, everybody. Uh, we'll go ahead and end and cut it off if you want to. I'll wait till like the last person, maybe. But your screen is still shared, Carrie, as well. What's that? Your screen is still shared. There we go. That's why when I when I went off the uh, PowerPoint, I assumed it went off the screen. But everybody's looking at all the comments. No, it was just your uh, YouTube streaming stuff that was up, like how you connected. Oh, uh, okay. Hey, Donica, shout out to Donica. I see your name. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate you. Have a good night and let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Thanks, right. Tony. Send something in the chat as well.
So maybe that'll. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you for showing. I'll take a yeah, look at that. I wasn't quite sure how that got communicated. So. Yeah, I hadn't heard anything about that, but. Great. Have a good night. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. David and Sean, you guys can go if you'd like. Up, oh, Sean already went. Thanks, Carrie. See you tomorrow. Yep. Thanks for staying out, hanging out. <laughs>